Now ahead of World Heart Health Awareness Week, today we are talking about ways to look after your heart and the science to look out for if something isn't quite right, Nola. Yes, and here to share his expertise with us is consultant cardiologist with the Matter Private, Dr. Gail Jover. So, Gail, you are an arrhythmia specialist. So, first of all, what does that mean? What does arrhythmia mean? Um, I am an electrician in, in, in the heart uh, business. Uh, I deal with uh, heart ry rhythm disorders. So, uh, and uh, who, who should be worried uh, ab about this, Gail? Uh, young, old, male, female, who, who, who does it affect? Anybody. E everybody. And how, how can it affect everybody? Um, no, normally, the heart is very quiet. And uh, we are unaware that we have 100,000 beats per day. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work that way. And uh, anybody with any kind of um, underlying heart disease or even without any heart disease can have an arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. And how would you know you have a heart arrhythmia? What are the symptoms of that? So. Basically, we wouldn't know we have a normal heart because, as I said, the heart is very quiet. Mm -hmm. But um, symptoms like shortness of breath that is unusual or rapidly increasing, associated or not with um, a central chest pain radiating to the jaws, the back, the shoulders, um, or palpitations lasting minutes or hours, or even um, sudden loss of conscience, these are the main signs your heart might be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, is it, is it one or two or all three signs, Dr. Gale? Yeah. They can be one, they can be all together. Okay, and so if you're experiencing any of these things, what's, what's the next step? What should you do? Go to your GP to call the urgent, urgent cardiac care in Dublin, in our facility, for instance, mm -hmm. or to to go for a consultation, having an ECG done, see a doctor. And what are the likely treatments that you would be recommended after being diagnosed with an arrhythmia? Oh, uh, there are, arrhythmias can be um, addressed by different manners, medications or uh, catheter-based therapies. Mm -hmm. And um, these therapies are today extremely efficient, minimally, minimally invasive and safe. And with the support of um, uh, 3D mapping system, um, they've been a game, game changer of, over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Dr. Gale, if, if you can look at your TV screen there, what, what are we seeing here on the left-hand side first? So, on the right-hand side, you would see catheters into the, the upper chambers of the heart in, in through the, the right atrium going to the left atrium. And so this patient is having an atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. which is a fast heart rate coming from the left atrium, and that it can cause a stroke. So these catheters can be located in space with a software, just like your car would be located on the sat nav. Mm -hmm. And so you can recreate the geometry of the chamber your catheters are in. And that is what is shown on, on, on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. And so you can direct the, the therapy, the catheters where you want to burn uh, um, the tissue to treat the arrhythmia. Okay. Uh, th there's another term here, doctor, you might be able to explain it for us, and it is uh, ablation. What is that? Ablation is the terminology that means that you're going to destroy a tiny area in the heart that is the, the location where an arrhythmia comes from. So we do not remove anything, but just we remove, we burn some tissue that is, we remove the tissue that is responsible for the arrhythmia, but we do not cut anything. Okay, very interesting. And in general, to keep our hearts healthy, are there any basic things we should be doing, Dr. Gale? Well, on a general point of view, apart from non-smoking, which is just a poison, um, I would have three tips. The first is exercising on a very regular basis. 
Uh, walking is the simplest way to exercise. Um, our ancestors walked the globe to, to settle everywhere, so we can walk a good chunk every day, it doesn't harm. The, the second tip would be to have a healthy diet and to keep away from junk food, processed food and easy sugar as much as possible. And believe me that cooking can be very easy and fun and uh, colourful and quick. So that is at everybody's reach. Mm -hmm. And the third tip would be having a good sleep. We know that a good sleep quality is important for learning, but it's also good for um, the heart. There is one issue that is the sleep apnea syndrome, and that is often associated with obesity, hypertension, or diabetes, which are um, factors that favor uh, atrial fibrillations. And so the sleep apnea is very detrimental to the heart in general. Okay. And um, ju just one question before we go, Gail. How important is lifestyle when it comes to all of this? Repeat your question. Sorry, um, I didn't hear very well. How important is lifestyle? Well, the, the lifestyle contributes to the, the, the factors that I just mentioned, like overweight, um, um, obesity, I mean, um, hypertension and diabetes. It's the way that we eat, the, the way that we exercise or not. Mm -hmm. And that is what we would call the lifestyle. And changing the lifestyle is just to rethink our habits and to have healthy habits on a general point of view. Dr. Gale, that's fascinating stuff altogether. Thank you very much for being with us today. And of course